Well, hello everyone, it's Mr. Wassman, and today we are going to solve the mystery of unknown angle measures. We're in our home lengths, Unit 8, Lesson 2, and I'm actually going to have you take a look at problem number 2 first. It says, find the missing angle measures. For each problem, write an equation with a letter for the unknown to show how you found your answer. Okay? So I'm starting with number 2 because when I'm thinking of finding a missing angle measure, uh, I'm thinking in terms of fact families. Y'all remember fact families, right? We've been doing them since probably first grade, where I know two numbers and I come up with a third, okay? Like, for example, I know that 3 plus 4 gives me 7, So that means that if I started with 7 and I subtract 3, that's going to give me an answer of 4 because all three of those numbers belong to this fact family. Okay? But instead of 3, 4, and 7, I have a fact family with this circle that involves 210 degrees and 360 degrees because 360 degrees is the measure of a circle, like so, okay? So my fact family of a circle angle measurement is always going to include 360 degrees. Now with this angle, you can see I've got 210, so my question is, what's my missing measurement? What's my third number in my fact family? So just like I did with my problem of 3, 4, and 7, switching it around to a subtraction problem, I'm going to do the same thing with this. So I know that 210 plus something gives me 360. I'm going to just turn that around. 360 minus 210 leaves me with something. What's my missing angle measurement? Okay. Well, when I'm subtracting large digit numbers, it's always better if I write them vertically. So 360, 210, 0 minus 0, 6 minus 1, 3 minus 2, and my answer is 150 degrees. That's my missing measurement. Okay, so my equation could be either one of those two problems I set up over by my fact family triangle. 210 plus something gives me 360, or 360 minus 210 equals P is my missing number, okay? And we've learned that P equals 150 degrees, okay? Let's take a look then at problem one. So now I'm going backwards a little bit, partly because here we've got some ballet slippers, now you might be asking yourself, well, Mr. Wassman, how do you know that those are ballet slippers and not say, I don't know, house slippers? Well, as a father of a former dancer, I have been to many a dance recital, and I can recognize first position when I see it, where uh, the dancers try to uh, put their heels together and create a straight of a line with their feet as possible. Now, you know, physically, it's near impossible to get a 180 degree straight line, but you can get pretty darn close as you can see here. So the angle of the left foot, or the left slipper, is 82 degrees, and the angle of the right slipper is 83 degrees. So here, we're trying not to figure out what is the difference from 180 degrees, but we want to know how close to 180 degrees these two angles got. Uh, so I'm going to create an addition problem. 82 degrees plus 83 degrees equals... And here they use the letter F for our missing angle measure. So all I have to do here is add these two numbers together, 82 plus 83, and that'll give me my total. You probably already added these in your head already. It's 165 degrees. So F in this equation is 165 degrees. So that's all there is to it. We're just creating fact families with some angles. And uh, in the case of most of these drawings, you already have two of the three measurements. 
like in number three, that little telltale square in the corner right there, that tells us that that's a 90 degree angle or a right angle, okay? Same goes for uh, number four, where we see that semicircle arch of curly arrows. That means that we have a total of 180 degrees all together, okay? So you're just going to find the missing add end or subtract the two numbers to get your difference to figure out that missing angle measure. Okay, finally, let's take a look at these problems down at the bottom, the practice problems. You are adding fractions. Now, we did this before uh, a couple of units ago, uh, but we're doing it again because this practice is going to come back up in the stuff that we do later on in this unit. Okay, let's take a look at problem number eight. One-fourth plus three-fourths plus another three-fourths. So again, when I'm adding fractions, if all of the denominators are the same, that means all I have to do is focus on the numerators up here. So I can ignore the fours and just think of 1 plus 3 plus 3. And of course, 1 plus 3 plus 3 is going to give me 7. 7 what? That would be 7 fourths. Now, an improper fraction is an okay answer, but it's better to come up with a mixed number. Okay. Now, when I'm thinking of Fourths, I like to think of quarters, because we deal with money all the time. And I know that for every four quarters, I get one dollar. So if I divide seven into groups of four, I can figure out how many whole dollars I can get out of those quarters. Well, I can get one group of four, because one times four is four. Subtract the difference, I'm left with three, three fourths. So if I had seven quarters, that'd be the same as saying a dollar seventy-five, or one and three fourths. Okay. Does this seem easy? Well, if so, I've done my job well. If you still have questions, then you know what to do. You need to go and talk to your math teacher. Uh, they will happily point out any missing pieces uh, or answer any questions that this video does not provide. Okay. And you know what? They are. Happy to help you regardless of how good my videos are, okay? I hope that you enjoyed this one. Uh, I look forward to talking to you again. Until then, have a good day. Thanks.